Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Dr. Mandel here with you. I want to say welcome to everyone out there worldwide. I hope you're having a beautiful day or night. I want to talk about the best and worst positions when it comes to the lower back. When it comes down to the amount of intradiscal pressure, how much pressure or weight is affecting those discs, uh, many of you have disc degeneration, herniated disc, bulging disc, spondylosis, maybe uh, uh, spondylolisthesis, where one vertebrae is slipping forward, spondylolysis. Uh, there's a lot of different situations you could have in the lower back, but let's go into something really important for you. Um, there are many positions that we're in that we think we feel good being in that position. But so what I'm going to teach you today, I'm going to show you the facts of how much stress is on that disc. And if you're in the wrong position, you're looking for potential problems. Or if you have a problem, you need to make changes. So this is what this whole purpose of, of us talking about this, because I don't want you to keep doing what's making the problem worse. Otherwise, you can run to doctors, take your medicine, get your injections. Uh, it's kind of like scraping the skin again and never getting it uh, to heal correctly. If you look in the middle of the uh, vertebrae, you have the nucleus pulposus, annular fibrosis. The inside blue is the the uh, the nucleus, and the outside coverings is the annulus. And uh, if you have too much stress compressing down on that disc, that uh, nucleus can shift out of place, putting pressure into the annulus and pushing it out onto the nerve root. Okay, so let's look here. So this is the degenerative disc, and you get degenerative discs when uh, there is imbalance, too much force, an injury, uh, being overweight, too much stress in an area, generally from poor posture, which we'll show you in a second. Look above there where it says a healthy disc. So degenerative disc, that disc is getting thinner. Uh, you're losing fluid, and as a result of that, the hole where the nerve comes out of, called the intervertebral foramen or the IVF, that nerve root becomes impinged and irritated. So in other words, wherever that nerve is going to, it's going to cause symptoms. So it's going down the leg, sciatica, if it's going uh, to another area on top of the leg and the groin, it's going to cause pain in the relationship to where that nerve is being compressed on. So when that disc starts to compress on that nerve, kind of like stepping on a garden hose trying to water the garden, uh, you're not getting all the water out of that garden into the garden because you're blocking off the flow of water, but the nervous system uh, is blocking off the flow of life trying to get to the tissue cells. So if it doesn't receive it, there becomes symptoms, inflammation, whole manifestation. Now, this is the fun part here. Uh, if you look here, I'll briefly go through this real quick. You can come back on your own time. The best position to be in for the disc, the lower back we're talking about here, is the lying position, 25 uh, uh, kilograms of pressure. These are all kilograms. Uh, this is the intradiscal pressure. The intradiscal pressure is the amount of pressure that's being put on that disc. So obviously, if you have a, a serious injury or problem, this would be the least amount of pressure on the disc. Lying on your side is 75 pounds. I'm sorry, kil kilograms. Remember, I believe it's 2.2 pounds uh, to a kilogram, give or take. So uh, the ratio basically we're looking at uh, we're looking at stress so just remember the amount of forces in comparison i really wouldn't worry about the calculation of how much it's gonna make a difference but in proportion is what is the best and worst position you can see here 25 supine thing on your back 75 on your side standing straight up we have 100 percent uh, force coming down on the disc um, i'm just going to use this as percentages just to give you an understanding here but these are actually kilograms um, if you stand up, lean forward, it becomes 150. If you stand up and lift something in front of you, away from your body, it's 220. Now look at the difference in changes. That's why so many people have so many problems when they lift things. The, the correct way to lift, obviously, is bending uh, your knees, keeping the back straight. You see when that back goes forward, the more that back goes forward, the more stress is on that disc. Uh, so if you go down to the next thing here, the man sitting, 140 kilograms. Um, and if you notice uh, the way he's sitting there, you're saying, well, why is that seated position only 140? I'm going to show you in just a second. I'll come back to that. Uh, 185, him leaning forward. Uh, so anytime you lean forward at your desk, at your computer, 
uh, at your car, wherever you're at, you're putting excessive amount of load on that lower bit, lower disc. Now, if you lean forward and you hold something, that's the worst. There's no question that uh, if you're holding a weight, the closer you keep it to your body, the less stress you're going to put on the disc. Let's look here. So generally what we're looking at here, uh, the supine position up top says 24%. We, we could say 25, give or take. Now, if you look right below it, uh, this is something interesting I want to share that it, these are specific chairs that people, uh, companies make. And you notice the chair is not perfectly erect and vertical. You notice that back of the chair comes back. Guess what? There is less stress on the disc when you sit in those kind of chairs. So I want to mention something to you because many doctors and, and uh, biomechanic, biomechanics, people that talk about this a lot, don't really go into the depth about driving. But theoretically, if your back seat, uh, the, the back part of your seat is reclined a little further back, kind of like that chair, you're going to have less stress on your disc, which I, I find it quite interesting because uh, we, we always have thought in the past before the studies came out that when you lean back, uh, you're going to put more pressure on the disc. And I'll show you why in just a second. So standing is 100%. Uh, sitting up in a chair it's straight up vertical is 140%. You can see the difference that when you sit up in a chair and then when the back of the chair uh, goes back, you have less stress. Okay. That really, that's really important. So theoretically, what are we trying to tell you here? We're trying to tell you the worst positions to be in is when you're sitting forward, when you're leaning forward. Here's a person leaning forward on their computer, 170%. It's 70% more than when you're standing. And then if you're leaning forward, uh, particularly holding something, it becomes worse. But if you're hunching, obviously that hunching is worse than just leaning forward. So what do people do? Uh, you, you may be uh, sitting at playing your cards, your games with your friends. You may be leaning over, typing. But this position is the absolute worst position. This hopefully will teach you. Now, what I like to do, I like to take a lumbar pillow. Okay, I can't pull it off of here, but I can maybe raise it a little bit. There's my pillow right there. And um, what that pillow does, uh, if we look at this picture here, that pillow will help support the lumbar lordosis. So theoretically, by putting the pillow or a lumbar roll behind you, a rolled up towel, and you sit up and you lean back on it, and it fills the lumbar lordosis. Uh, if you look here, this is the lumbar uh, lordosis right here. Okay, and if you fill that lumbar lordosis, what that will do is that will prevent uh, your body. Because what happens is when you sit, as soon as you sit, the, the, the lumbar lordosis starts to flatten. Okay, so in other words, it's like this. And then when you sit down, this is what happens. So now you have more load on the disc. Because when you have more load on the disc, you get more degeneration. So sitting, obviously, is a very bad position unless you're sitting further backwards. And so what does that tell us? If you're sitting further backwards, then theoretically, you're putting more of a lordosis back into the spine. You're trying to keep the same position that, that God designed to be in, which is a like this, like an S-shaped curve. You have a lordosis, a kyphosis, and a lordosis. But uh, if you lean backwards, it's telling us that there's less stress on the disc. So by having a good support pillow, uh, you're going to lean back into that pillow. It's going to fulfill that lumbar curve. The pelvic will not rotate as much posterior. Uh, you won't get as much contracture in the, in the flexors, in the, in, the, in the hip flexors, which is the iliopsoas uh, muscles. Uh, so we are preserving the spine. Now, theoretically, what's the best position? Uh, standing anytime. So what does this tell us? This tells us one very important thing. Uh, when you have disc problems, uh, any kind of problem or nerve root involvement, the best thing is getting up and walking. Uh, in the past, studies have shown that uh, people were with sciatic pain going down the leg, people would rest and they wouldn't get well as fast. But people that walk would uh, because it's good to walk, but it's not good to sit. So if you're sitting, try to get it more often, change positions. Very, very important. Uh, I hope that uh, this gives you a little bit of insight. It, 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 go back to those pictures and look at those pictures and make sure that you are sitting correctly. Uh, this is your spine. I got you know, hundreds, just you know, thousands of people with, with these conditions and the, the doctors don't talk about the biomechanics. 
They talk about, you know, the anti-inflammatories, the muscle relaxers, the painkillers, the MRIs, the epidurals, the surgery. But what about the biomechanics? So here is my question. My question uh, for people out there is that even if you had surgery, even if you had physical therapy, if you keep doing the wrong things, you're going to keep having the wrong problems. So you want the right problems. You don't want problems. But anyways, uh, share this video. Check out my uh, Facebook motivational doc. Leave whatever questions there as well as below. Uh, whatever thumbs up, I appreciate it. Share this video with those people that can benefit. There's a lot of people out there. And believe it or not, back pain is a major, major epidemic. A lot of love to the families out there with good health. Uh, lots of prayers for you. Keep staying proactive. And we'll catch up with you on our next video. Bye-bye now.